Hey, welcome everybody. Uh, so glad you could join us for this week's uh, Steerus Weekly Grind. And I'm really excited to be joined by my colleague, Hilary Esty. And we've had the privilege over the last two years, can you believe it, Hilary? Two years to work with a client and help them really to transform their, their culture and how they lead. And, and we've brought to, to that to that situation, the five C's. And what we wanna do for these next 14 minutes or so is just unpack from the perspective of this client, how we've used the five C's. So you, as you're listening to this conversation that Hillary and I have, just think about how these five C's might apply for you in your journey, in your own learning, if you're an individual learner and taking on something new, or if you're leading a team or an organization and how one or all of these five C's might support you. So before we dive in with Hillary, the five C's are commitment, curriculum, coaching, community, and consistency. So Hillary, just to kick us off, which one of those is your favorite? Which one do you see over our experience and your experience, which one's your favorite and you think has, has the, the biggest impact? Oh, that's an excellent question, Jeff. I have a six. Oh, okay. Oh, surprise. Um, context, right? So, and I would go with curriculum. And, and that's really uh, probably a lot to do with my background in instructional design and delivery over many, many years in many, many different environments of both regular um, on frontline leadership and <clears throat> leadership executive training um, that, you know, I go to what, what, are, we, what are we trying to accomplish? And with me, that's in curriculum. Mm. Now, yeah, if we just add, little, add, add my context thing there. It's so important that we understand the context in which the curriculum is de delivered, right? So I've been doing leadership training for 30 years. There's some new stuff, there's some new angles, but most of it is, is pretty standard stuff. And the gem is in how we, the context in which it's needed and used in the environment that we're working with. Yeah, and what we've seen is <clears throat> the curriculum within those, that, that context that we've been working in is, is these are super busy individuals. So that's the context. And what we've realized with this client over these last two years, but also with others is that you can't overwhelm them with curriculum. It's it's really bite-sized, easily digestible content or curriculum over the over a period of time. Which brings us to this idea of one of the, our other C's is consistency. And and how have you seen that play out and how important that is in in the learning and the change process? Oh, so, you know, that's so, so important. And, I, and it ties in, I think, with commitment too. Um, <clears throat> and because what we've seen, what we've been able to see in this two-year journey is what most organizations do go through um, when they start out. And that's that they, in addition to being super busy, they had super amounts of change that they needed to absorb as they went through. And there were several places in this journey where they could have completely derailed, where they could have completely said, and, and we did, we went on pause and we did readjust and we made, we made the necessary changes. In other environments I've worked in, it would have been the end because there would, because the commitment wasn't there, but the commitment from the beginning and the consistency with, yeah, this is, our culture is the number one Thing that this organization has to get right and probably the only thing that we need outside expertise with I think we've talked about this before right this is a bunch of experts they are so good in their field um, you know they can do it in their sleep but in terms of in, in embedding a culture and creating a culture that survives all of the changes and all of the things that, that happened including the pandemic and the fact that this particular client was heavily involved in the work that the pandemic generated um all, all of that just goes to show how uh commitment and consistency worked um i think also 
So, so there's some longevity that is so important, right? Like the fact that this whole, this client is still at it two years later, same set of values, same program delivered slightly differently to accommodate the changes in the environment. Um, their people know, their people know this is real. This is not a fly by night. This is, we did not, we did not come up with, with the, the values so that we can post them on our website and so that we can, you know, flash them to anybody that interviews us or whatever. Um, this is the way we are going to live. And uh, that's, that's so cool. Yeah, it wasn't a hey, single that's a event. C. Yeah. yeah, and it wasn't a single event. It wasn't a single event. The learning wasn't a single event. Check the box and we're done. <laughs> But I love how you just combine consistency and commitment because the, the commitment is to the consistency, is to we're in this for the long haul. And then there's the individual commitment to doing this behavior and to engage in the learning on a, on a micro learning consistent basis over a long period of time. So we got curriculum, we have commitment, we have consistency, your bonus one of context. Then we have coaching. We have coaching and we have uh, community. community. I can't believe I forgot. <laughs> coaching and community. So where where where's coaching? Coaching sometimes is seen as some elite offer that only the, the highest levels of leadership and the ultra rich um, could ever uh, uh, avail themselves of. How how has coaching in your mind, how have you seen that become so essential to this learning and change process? So, it, you know, from the very beginning in identifying the values and the leadership behaviors in this organization, the leadership team saw approach as a coach as a critical piece of the way that they were going, their culture was going to operate. So, so they defined it up front and they said, we don't want to have a hierarchical organization where you have to go up the ladder and back down the ladder and, you know, go through all the approval process and all this other stuff. Um, we want to empower our individuals to act quickly, to be trusted, to do the work that they're able to do. And, and, and when they need help, it should be from a coaching standpoint. So starting with that, like starting with their definition, um, which was so wholeheartedly embraced by every group that we've taken through the, taken through the program, um, but not necessarily well understood. Uh, that, you know, that was a, it's a big piece of our, our learning for them. Um, so very simple tactical approaches, more kind of almost not like what not to do, like, don't step in and don't solve the problem and don't you know, like some re uh jiggering of our basic approaches to the coach approach of leadership um that just not just in this organization but in any organization just is, is such a continual growth pattern if you have leaders who are acting as coaches you are always growing you are always learning you are always bringing more to the table than you as a leader have right so our traditional is like as a as a leader i'm supposed to have all the answers you come to me with a big, really big issue or a really sticky issue and i it's my job to get it to get it fixed in a coaching environment it's not just me it's not just me we are in this together and let's work it through together. And the end result is not only usually a, a resolved problem, but also a growth and learning opportunity for both the leader and the person who they are working with. So that's my that's my that's my take on coaching and the community thing. Boy, community thing is everything, right? What do you think about the community thing? Uh, it's actually my favorite, uh, to be honest, because in our busy worlds, we 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 get so isolated. And, and you end up in your silo, you end up in your lane and you're doing your best to, to learn something new, to figure something out, to, to be committed to a change. But learning and change happens best when it's done, when you're linked to arms with other people, when you're, when, when you're in community. And, and I think that's, 
mean, there's lots of secret sauce in each of these threes, but, but I think that is the most, one of the most compelling pieces or, or ingredients of this secret sauce of effective change is that people don't feel like they're alone, that they can walk down the hall, whether it's a virtual hallway or whether it's a physical hallway, and, and they can support one another and be learning and applying and practicing together. And you know, we've used we've used teams, virtual groups and teams in Slack, um, in another in other tools uh, to create an asynchronous group where they're not meeting at the water cooler, but they're meeting virtually on a consistent basis to share what they're learning, how what they're struggling with, what's going on. So I think that is uh, my favorite child of the seas is the. <laughs> Is, is, the, is the community piece because we are in this age of connectedness, we are all very isolated, um, which is a crazy oxymoron, but, but it's true, we're, we're isolated and intentionally bringing community and connection into learning and change, it's been so, so powerful. I think it also, for, for me and what we've seen is it, um, it creates the the go forward plan, right? So the the operational plan is built in, right? You, you don't you're not we're not stepping in as the external folks that can, you know, run a workshop and introduce a lot of material and have you practice with it and then we leave, and then everybody goes back to their their silos and their individual places. It's not you know, if we build it into the learning. Um, and we build it into the experience of learning, the accountability is there. Now, accountability is another one of this particular um, <clears throat> client's uh, values and like really, really important points. But the, the, the other idea about learning and community is that the thing we talk about common language, right? So, cause we knew like, even when we sat down two years ago with the, the CEO and the lead team with all their ideas and, and, and we knew like, all right, you're talking about trust and you're talking about um, accountability and you're talking about lead with a coach approach. You're talking about love our people. That means a lot of different things to a lot, all those things mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. And they're all really great when things are going well. It's really easy to do that stuff, but let's start, you know, let's go out with we don't have a common understanding and it's not going to be easy because the environment is going to change. So we're going to build into this community, a support system that allows them to say, Hey, is this, is this what, when we said empower our people, is this what we agreed to, right? Is this, are you, is this how you're doing it? Um, because you and I aren't there anymore and they are their, they are their expert group. So yeah, so it's a, and it's been fantastic to watch it. Honestly, um, it's something that they, this client and the people embrace. I think as adult learners and, a, and adult leaders, like we don't give them enough credit for what they are capable of, um, and it's been really, really neat to see. Yeah, so. it, it it has, and I think we've given them the the raw the material to to to, to do this themselves right. because that's really what we want to accomplish is we don't as external folks we don't want to be there in the weeds with them forever and ever uh, we want them to be able to marshal this themselves and I think bringing them the these five C's is going to enable them and for anybody to be able to take on something of their own, whether for their own learning and change or for their team or organization and create a, a structure that's gonna point them to success. Cause that's the, I think that's the thing that we, we wanna see with, with everybody uh, is that they have the best chance of being successful in the thing, the change, the learning that they want to accomplish. Just as we wrap up, Hillary, what, what would be your words of, of wisdom or, or coaching, some guidance, maybe a question that you could leave with those that are watching the, the weekly grind today on, on, on where they go from here? Uh, well, it's, to me, it's always been, what's your goal? 
right? So where are you now? Where do you want to be? And what is truly the difference? Mm. And then, you know, given that, um, you start tearing it, start tearing it down and breaking it down to, okay, what, it, what, it, what does it mean to get there? I mean, really what, what and why are you trying to do what you're doing? What's wrong with what you have now? Yeah. Or how do you want to be different? And, and that's, we've done that work with a lot of clients and um, it's not an easy process, but if it's not done at the beginning, then I know you and I would be out and probably any other consultant. So know what you know what you're trying to accomplish. Get there. Yeah. And then take those five Cs, five C's and then build a, a framework that's going to support you to get from here to that thing that you've now decided to. So this was a blast. Uh, I loved jamming for these for this for this week's weekly grind. Um, thanks so much. Connect with us here on on whichever platform that you're viewing this on. And if you if we can be of any help, and if you have a question about the five C's, uh, just send us a message. Thanks so much. Thank you, Jeff. Have a great day.